Hey guys, it's Kayler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Today is day 51 of the Day the UI series. Today we're creating a press page. And today we're going to be doing a download link for a press kit. I figured that that would be suitable enough for the design. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a real image heavy design. And we're going to focus on creating a focal point towards that download button using that background image. This one should be a pretty quick one to do. So let's go ahead and get started in Adobe Experience Design. In my assets panel, I already have my color scheme laid out. So I'm just going to change the background of this document to this teal for now so we can see. And let's go ahead and put our logo. So in this design, I'm not going to be doing any wireframing or mocking it up just simply because I've already sketched very heavily today. I felt like it was one of those days where my mocking up was struggling. So I just sketched a bit and I came out with something that I like. So let's do Proxima Nova on this text. I really need to go and get some other fonts. If you guys have any suggestions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will download them through Typekit and give them a shot. I've been using Proxima Nova and Roboto quite a bit lately and I'd like to uh, get a bit of a change of pace. So let's add a shadow on there and we'll just position this 150 from the side of the page. So holding shift and using my arrow keys and we'll just drop it down a few there. 40 will do for now. And on the other side, we're going to have a login button. So I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to change this to a border of two pixels. And then we'll just put login inside there. And then we'll also change this to Proxima Nova. We'll go with 22 on the font size, change it to white, and apply a drop shadow. I'm going to use my assets panel to set these character styles so we can use them again if we need to. There we go. And we'll just size these two together. So this needs to be scaled down quite a bit. I'm also going to round this to a thousand so we have a nice round there on the side. And let's drop that in a bit and on the sides as well. That's a nice size login button so I'm going to group that together. And then I'm just going to position that 150 on this side. And let's just center those up. Next we need some navigation links. So I'm just going to copy this text by ungrouping this. And let's just put press. This is going to be the current page we're on. And I'm going to align these to the right so we can get some nice spacing. Okay. And now we are ready for the main text. So all we're going to need is just a title. So I'm going to copy this and just put media and press. Let's drop this down to a bold. And we should probably leave it around 56 so it's nice and bold there. I'm going to center that up on the page and we'll just align it roughly for now. Below it we're going to have some text that I've already typed out so I'm going to go copy that. Let's change it to white. It's just talking about the latest version of the press kit. I'm going to apply this style of font to 22. Center it up and we'll drop it down below this medium press and let's go down about 12 from that. Next we're going to need a download button and we're going to just copy this button here and place it right there. And then let's just say on the text download press kit. We'll extend this outline out. Make it just a little bit thicker and a little bit longer so it's a little bit bolder than this button up here. And we'll center those up. I'm going to group it and place it about 56 from the bottom of this text. So we have something like that. Now let's go ahead and work on the background image. So I'm going to change this back to white. And so we won't be able to see much. And I'm going to drag in this mountain biking image that I have. Let's create a rectangle that fills our canvas artboard either one. I'm going to send it to the back and then grab both of them and hit command shift M and that will mask with shape. I'm going to scale this up and I want the handlebar to kind of point towards this area here and that's how we're going to be creating kind of our focal point and let's adjust that. So this needs to be brought down a bit 
where's the center of my page, okay? So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. It's kind of all leading up there. So we have these trees creating a line here. We kind of have the handlebars creating a line. We have this empty space. So that's a good direction to be pointing there. So now we need to create a series of overlays on top of this image so that we can see our text and add a bit of color. So I'm gonna highlight this in teal, drop this down to 60. I'm gonna send it to the back and bring it in front of my image. And then let's add a bit of highlight up here at the top. So I will copy and paste this. I'm gonna create this as green and I'm gonna switch this to a gradient. And on this darker one, I'm going to drop the opacity down to zero. And then we'll just drag this straight up so that we have a little bit of highlight up there, but not too much. And then we're gonna lower the opacity on that even further to about 20%. With that done, I'm gonna go back in and adjust a little bit more so we can see some more of the green. So I'm going to play around with these buttons and try them as solids now because I can't have uh, that outline there. You can't really see it. So we need to do something to that. It doesn't matter really what we go with as long as it's clearly visible. So I'm just gonna go through and add these as solids to this instead of outlines and changing the text to white. And then let's remove the drop shadow if we do that as well. So that can work as well. And let's add a bit of detail to the logo. So we want to kind of have something to spice us up a bit. So I'll grab my pen tool. We'll just create a shape. It doesn't have to be anything special. And we'll just connect that. And I'll fill it. And we can apply this green color to it that we were using. All right, and I'm gonna adjust this. So let's grab here, do something like that, and then we'll just slant it to the side slightly. And then we will put this, let's rotate it. You can put it like right there. kind of match that spacing in between the letters. And I'll apply that same drop shadow to it. I'm going to adjust this round. It's kind of a little off. That's one thing about the pencil and Adobe Experience Design, the roundness uh, that it auto rounds to is a little, um, a little pointy. It uh, doesn't round very smooth sometimes. And that just gives it a nice little color detail to draw your eye to the logo. And I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and export this image. And I'll see you guys in Photoshop. So as we work on this here in Photoshop, I'm going to work non-destructively because I want to probably change some of these buttons. I'm not liking how these two look. They're very similar and I don't like the way they pop on the background. Maybe even changing the color altogether might work. I'm not 100% sure. So we're just going to be applying things on separate layers and not actually adjusting this layer itself. So the first thing I want to try that I always like to do now is play around with some watercolor adjustments. Let's see here. Let's apply some different stuff in that corner. Okay, so I like that in the corner. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to kind of mimic that. And then I'm going to turn this layer off. So I like that up there. It's kind of like a water-ish mark. And then let's put it down here in the bottom. So we, what we want to do with this is we just want to add a little bit of detail without uh, overdoing it. So this is kind of adding like a little dirt effect going on. And let's go into the brush settings and shape dynamics, angle jitter. There we go. So it's kind of obvious that a hero, our fake company here is for a mountain bike kind of company. Could be for their jackets or for their bikes itself. Anything to do with that. And so we want a little dirt that the rider's kind of getting here in the corner on his GoPro. So we'll get a little bit of that there. Maybe a swatch sticking way out from his arm. Yeah, and then we'll put something in the corner. 
All right, so I'm just gonna call this uh, one. So that's my first adjustment layer, and I'm gonna delete this. So here I'm happy with the small adjustments that we made. Before we go further, I want to fix these buttons. So let's go back to Adobe Experience Design. So maybe it's the color. So let's try to change this. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into my assets panel and let's just edit this and paste the new color in and that should change everything. Very nice. Let's change this back to a border. Remove that fill. Yeah, that's a lot better. So now these two are not clashing. We also have the highlight color up there, so that looks good. Maybe we drop this text that's inside of here just a bit. Whoops. So let's drop that down to 18. And then we'll center it back up. Yeah, that's a lot better. That gives us a little bit more space and padding on that button without it being oversized. So I'm going to preview this. Let's decrease a little bit of that spacing there. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's go back into Photoshop. I'm going to re-export this and just drag it back in. And we're going to add a 3D LUT. So I'm going to go to the top layer and just select this grid. And we'll just look through and find one that looks good. Wow. <laughs> Three strip looked fantastic. And I'm just going to go through and simply click on this one. Now this one is nice because it's a nice muddy and this is what I was hoping I would get eventually. So quickly what I did was I went back into Adobe Experience Design. Now that we found this and I like this, I exported the text separately from the background image. So now you'll see all of our text has come nice and bright again. But I don't want the drop shadows kind of stacking on each other. So I'm going to hide this image. And then I exported the image itself separately as well. So I'm going to drag that in and we'll just put that down bottom and then we'll put the text above the LUT. So now we can adjust the LUT freely without having to worry about changing our branding colors, which are these lime green highlights. So let's drag this fill all the way down. So we'll just slowly drag this up so that it kind of mutes the effects we have on our gradient so that it doesn't make it too overwhelming. Around there is nice, it gives a nice subtle touch. And I also want to erase a bit of this brush that I've added here, it doesn't look very good. And then we have our final image. So here is the final result for our press kit download page for day 51 of the Daily Y series. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more UI related content. As always, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching the video guys, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. On the left is my previous video, just in case you missed it. On the right is YouTube's recommendation just for you, and the top center icon is my channel icon. Click that to subscribe for more content just like this. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.